Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing? All right, we're going to go around the room and ask everybody how they're doing. All right, Pate, you start. No, I'm just kidding. Well, it's good to have you. Uh, man, it's been a week already, hasn't it? It's already time. It's Wednesday. Week's almost, done. Oh, week's almost over, halfway at least. And it's time to just relax a little bit, to take in a deep breath and then let it all out. Now, that doesn't mean you can go to sleep tonight, okay? Just because we're relaxing, that doesn't mean we get to go to sleep. But we do get to spend a little time in God's Word. We get a moment to sing a little to Him. We get a moment to relax and to think and to take all that other stuff out to be here. And so while we do that, we're going to start with prayer to get us in that mindset. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come before you knowing that we are weak and we need your strength. We ask that you take away all of the burdens from the outside world and that you help us to think about you wholly and to think about you with as much reverence as we can. Help us to respect those around us. Help us to be conscientious of our, our desires and our desire to be one in unity. Dear Lord, help us tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's in your holy son's name that we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. First song tonight will be, Have You Seen Jesus, My Lord? Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? We'll sing the first and last verse of this song. <clears throat> Have you ever stood at the ocean? Next song this evening will be A Beautiful Life. A Beautiful Life. We'll sing the first and last verse of this song.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us to come together to worship you tonight. I pray, Father, that you be with the teachers tonight and give them a good remembrance of the things they studied. And be with us, Father. We take something from the lesson and apply it to our lives. And if our lives are not right, Father, help us to make them right with you before we leave. Father, we pray for those that are sick. Please help them to get well and better very soon. Be with the doctors and nurses and all the ones taking care of them. And be with those fathers lost loved ones, comfort and strengthen them through these difficult times they're going through. We pray, Father, that you be with our elders here, both Jimmy and Jeff and Doug, continue to guide and lead them and give them the health and wisdom they need, Father. We pray for the leaders of this country that you be with them and help them make the right decisions. Father, please be with those in the military that are fighting for our country. Please keep them safe and bring them back home to their families very soon. Father, thank you most of all for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I ask his prayer in Christ's name. Amen. invitation song is have you been to jesus and so we don't have any song books but we just want to let you know that that's what it is has anyone in here recently needed to make a uh whole a resume Has anybody in here need to make a resume recently within the last six months no one what about the last year i actually had to make, brandon really man did the boss fire you? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, the past year I have had to make a resume. And I will tell you now that the elders have seen how bad it is, um, like, it's hard to make a resume. It's, like, extremely hard. You have in the resume so many things that you have to look at, right? You have your hard skills. You have your, the things that you know you are qualified to do. I am, I am not, no. So you might be a CPR person. Uh, certified to do CPR. There's the better way of saying it. You might be proficient in some language, whether it be Spanish, French, or whatever it might be. Uh, you have been certified by the state of Alabama that you are uh, able to do X, and you can put whatever you want in there. And then there's the fun one, right? The soft skills. And we're really good at soft skills, aren't we? Soft skills are your, I'm really good at organization. Right, that it fluffs it up really good. I'm I'm time conscientious. Right, I'm not late. I'm not late very often. Um, I'm very I'm a good leader. You know these types of things. You might put your education on there. Hey, I graduated from high school. I graduated from this college. I graduated from this university. Whatever it might be. The one that's probably the hardest that people don't talk about very often. At least um, I would think in some uh, some jobs that I have done is that references like did you ever have to get references on your resume when you were going for your job did you have to get someone you had to call some they had to call that person but that's not the uncomfortable phone call the uncomfortable phone call is you asking somebody hey if someone calls you will you say something good about me please <laughs> you know will you say something you know reasonable you know don't fluff me up too much right don't don't you know say too many nice things cuz then they won't believe you just say the right amount of nice things and if they ask, you know, what are you bad at? Just tell them he's late every once in a while, you know, something along those lines. That's probably, I would think, the hardest part. Because what the first things do, the hard skills, the soft skills, the, uh, you know, the education, those are the report that you would, would give yourself. This is what I'm qualified to do. This is what I have the ability to do. These are the things that we might even say make me admirable. That, or they might be what we would call a good report about ourselves. Like if you want to know the report on me, Baron is skilled in XYZ. Baron got his education at uh, ABC, whatever it might be. But what would be the report on you if someone called someone else? If I put one of the elders here, you know, I would hope that if I put them as a reference for something, that's not insinuating anything, by the way, but if I were to put the, the elders on there and say, hey, could you give a good report? 
Could you say something good about me? Could you say something that is admirable? Would people be willing to do that? The word for admirable here in our passage that we've been reading over the past few Wednesdays uh, from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We've been trying to change the way that we think. Thinking about things that are helpful, thinking about things that are true, what is true, thinking about things that are noble or honorable, thinking about things that are righteous and just, thinking about things that are pure, and thinking about things that are lovely. Thinking about things that are admirable. And when I think of admirability, when I think of something that is of good report, I do think about those things that help me to become better. And I don't know if it's always necessarily, you know, truth and justice. Those things are definitely put into admirability. I am admirable, I would think, if I am true and honest, if I'm always doing what I'm supposed to be doing, if I'm acting righteously. But what about those things that I grow in skill in with the church that are admirable? What if I grow in skill in the ability to have conversations with people at church that I'm not used to having conversations with? What if I grew in my ability as a card writer? We don't even talk about card writing anymore. Card writing sometimes gets like thrown out the door as this, this ancient thing that never happens anymore. But what if I became better at it? What if I did just send one card a month to get into the habit? That would be admirable. That would be something that is of good report. It is something, the word for admirable or good report actually comes from to be able to choose your words wisely. That when something is of a good report, you actually take time to stop and to think about, well, what would I say about that person? Or what would I say about that thing? Almost like you're talking about your boss or your higher up, someone who has uh, more esteem than you. What would be the report? I might have to choose my words carefully about what I say. And here I think about that and I think about what could I do? What could I think about that makes me a more profitable member of the community? What could I think of that is admirable that helps me to further the cause of Christ by good works and by faithfulness and by joy and peace and love and by truth? What are the admirable things that I can think about? Because in those things that, those things that I think about, I think about better ways to make this community better and to help each other. Another way that we'll close on how we'll think about this is probably this. Could someone give a good report to you about you? If you were to turn to your husband or wife, they're usually the ones that either will not hold back the truth or they will hold back the truth. But if you were to ask your husband or wife, how's my Christian walk doing? How am I doing as I walk with the Lord? What would my husband or wife What would my wife say about my Christian walk? What would my best friend in Christ say about my Christian walk? Would they be willing to give a good report? Would they say that it has been admirable? It has been something worth admiring? Would they say that about me? If I were to write the resume of my Christian life tonight, would I admire what I wrote? Would it be filled with anything? Would it be filled with anything that I could give to somebody to say, I am God's chosen? I don't know where you stand tonight, but if you want to change that, if you want to change the way that you've been living, tonight's the night. We're here to pray. We're here to baptize. We're here with whatever you need as you come, as together we stand, and as we sing. Have you been to Jesus more than this?